Hi, this video is going to show you how this model works in terms of the positions of the xylem and the phloem in the plant. Okay, so what I'm holding now is a stem. So imagine that the stem of the plant is always cylindrical like this. Okay, and I identified here as the root end, means the roots will have been coming out from this end here, right? Okay, so imagine that the roots were from this end, and if your plant is upright like this, okay. So, this is the outer layer of the epidermis. Uh, in real life, they, they won't be made of straws. They are basically just many cells, but they form a single layer, okay? And in your textbooks, what you typically see is a cross-section. So that means if you were to cut across this stem, you will see this. So you'll notice that the epidermis is a single layer, just like in the leaves. So for the stem, it's also made of one single layer of epidermal cells. And the ones that you can see in yellow here, this would represent the cortex, okay? So they are like the filler cells that fill up in the stem as well as in the roots. Um, please bear in mind that although these are straws, in real life, this cortex as well as the epidermal cells, they are not straws, they are single cells which you pack together. So think of them more like marbles that you pack up in this thing, okay? Um, what I want to highlight to you though is these red and blue spots, okay? So reminder, here is our epidermal layer, then the yellow represents the cortex, and over here, the blue and the red, so the blue represents the flower, okay? So the flower always forms the outer layer of the vascular bundle, okay? And then when you have these red ones here, Okay, so these red ones will represent the xylem. If you look under microscopic images, the xylem is usually stained in red because there is a particular stain when they use in microscopy, it will color lignin and the lignin will react to this dye and appear red. Okay, so that's why I use red for this as well. Okay, so notice that in terms of the position in a stem, the flow always the outer ring pointing towards the epidermis and the xylem will be pointing towards the center, the inside of the stem. Okay, so it's always flow outside, xylem inside. Flow outside, xylem inside. Okay, and obviously you can see that these are straws. So you can see that the xylem, as a reminder, transports water and uh, mineral ions and they always transport in just one direction. So from the root end, the uh, roots will absorb the water and ions. They will move up and they will go into through the red straws here, okay? So the water and ions will only go through the red straws and go all the way up to wherever they need to go next, okay? So you can see that the red straw is continuous from the bottom to up to the top here, okay? And the same thing for the phloem, the phloem is also a tube, but the structure of the tube will be uh, different from the xylem. What is more important is for the phloem, right, it could depend on where the substances need to go. Normally, the substances would come from the leaf because that's where photosynthesis occurs, and then it will then move to other parts of the plant. So for example, if the leaf was somewhere on the top here and you want to move the sucrose to the roots. So that means the sucrose will now enter the blue tube here, okay? And it will move downwards to the root end. How about if the sucrose is supposed to be moved to the fruit, which is above the leaf, right? So in this case, the sucrose could enter the phloem again and this time the direction might be upwards instead, okay? So always remember, for the xylem, there's only one direction. It will move from the root end, so from the bottom, upwards. It will never go the other way around, okay? So water is always from the root to the top, okay? That's where the leaves are. For the phloem, it really depends on where the destinations are, okay? So it could be, you could use one of the tubes, one of these blue tubes, to move sucrose from the top to the roots. Or it, you could use maybe this other tube here, okay? Maybe this other blue tube over here. 
it may be moving from this area upwards instead maybe to a flower or a fruit okay so bear in mind that the xylem is one direction only from bottom to top the flow could depend on where you want to go but do bear in mind that if this particular tilt for example is already going downwards nothing can move in the opposite direction okay so in one particular flow tilt there is only one direction allowed at a particular time okay so that's something you need to take note now uh, so i've already mentioned about the position of the xylem and the phloem in the stem okay and in your books you will see that the phloem and the xylem make up a vascular bundle and this is what we covered in the leaf structure as well okay so how are you going to remember the position of the xylem and phloem in the leaf right so always bear in mind okay so no matter what so i've made another cross section here so for example if you are zooming in this particular uh, vascular bundle so if i was to cut this away i would get this okay so i ran out of yellow straw so i think orange would do right okay so you can see the green outer epidermal layer and the orange here represents the cortex and we still have the phloem and the xylem always remember that the phloem faces the epidermis and the xylem faces the inside okay so this is if i was to cut this chunk away so just imagine that here is the stem and now you want to branch out to a leaf right okay so if you branch out what will happen you will be bending this way right correct so if you bend this way now if i was to flip this towards you where is the xylem the xylem is now on top here correct okay so the xylem is on top and the phloem is at the bottom okay now why is it always going to be at the top okay so for example just now we took this corner right now what if we took let's say this corner okay so if we realign our vascular bundle so that it mirrors that okay so now the floor is still on the outside and the xylem on the inside right so if let's say you want to branch into the other side this time okay so let's say you have a leaf that comes from this side instead so you bend it this way and behold your xylem is still going to be on top okay so i hope this video is useful in terms of showing you in context how the xylem and the flowing structures are in the stem see you